In the name of God, whose mercy is profound, whose kindness is everlasting, we are discussing some of the ideas and thoughts of the Muslims which are in the category of their misunderstandings about the proper presentation of Islam. One of the very serious misunderstandings carried by a large number of Muslims is this, that they believe that no matter whatever the Muslims do, if you are a Muslim, you are bound to enter the paradise. This understanding most certainly is extremely misleading. It is misleading because if one were to believe in this understanding to be true, then it would mean that God, the creator of humankind, is unfair. He is going to treat Muslims in accordance with one set of principles and uh, the others with other set of principles. It is also misleading because when you read the Quran carefully, you come to this very clear understanding that the author of the Quran, God, is telling us that on the day of judgment, he is going to treat people in accordance with their performance. Performance in the domain of belief as well as performance in the domain of action. It is also misleading because we see time and again mentioned in the Quran the fact that the people who are going to succeed in the hereafter are the ones who are going to believe as well as do good deeds. This understanding also is not consistent with the Quran because of the fact that the Quran condemns the Jews who were the Muslims before the advent of Islam, before the revelation of the Quran. And the Jews used to make the same claim that they are not going to be uh, given to enter the hell uh, because they were Jews because they belong to the community which was uh, blessed by the Almighty's revelations and uh, had uh, the occasion of receiving messengers of God. The Almighty did not accept their claim that none of them is going to enter the hellfire except for a few days. And he, God, continues to clarify that this understanding is misleading and God has had no covenant, no commitment with the Jews whereby he is not going to uh, uh, allow any of the Jews to enter the hell. Likewise, of course, it has to be held as correct and true in the case of the Muslims as well. Because God, after all, uh, cannot really have policies which are conflicting, which have uh, some bias or inclination in favor of one group of people to the exclusion of all others. Why then is it that the Muslims believe that all Muslims are bound to enter the paradise. Well, the reason that is presented is that it is said that Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's mercy be on him, is reported to have said that whoever recites the kalima is going to enter the paradise. Now, the kalima is a statement which one formally mentions when one enters the fold of Islam. So that if you have formally joined uh, the uh, Islam, Islamic religion and uh, the fraternity of the Muslims, uh, you have ensured as a consequence of joining it that you will enter the paradise. Now, because it is said that the Prophet of God has given this statement, this guarantee himself, therefore it is bound to be true. How then it could be claimed that Islam is not in favor of any claims which enables one group of people to enter the paradise on the day of judgment, whatever be their uh, actions, whatever be their conduct. Well, the reason is that all statements of the Prophet have got to be looked at from the point of view of the context in which they were made, they were said. And the context has to be imagined in the light of what the Quran mentions, in the light of what other statements of the Prophet mention. Because you cannot take an important statement like this in isolation. It has to be understood properly, sincerely and seriously. When we look at the Quran, which most certainly for the Muslims is the most authentic source of knowledge and it is the no source which is the criterion 
which differentiates between what is right and what is wrong. When we look at the Quran and then we look at this hadith, uh, the only conclusion that one can draw is that the Prophet, may Allah's mercy be on him, he made this statement to encourage people who believed properly, but despite their belief, they would indulge in sins every now and then. People sometimes are so sensitive that on committing a sin, they get depressed, dejected, and frustrated. So that the Prophet, it seems, encouraged such people and said that, look here, there is no reason for you to be unnecessarily dejected when you commit a certain crime. All that you have got to do is to be loyal to your statement of kalima, the statement that you made while entering Islam. You repent, you correct yourself, and then you continue your path towards the right direction. And the Almighty is going to ensure that you will enter the paradise. It can also be explained to help understand this statement of the Prophet by mentioning that probably it was a statement that was made uh, for those people who would recite the Kalama from the core of their heart. They will recite the Kalama when they are about to die or some other such occasion or situation that could clarify that this guarantee of entering the paradise is not meant for all Muslims no matter whatever they do, no matter whatever their performance. Indeed, the Quranic understanding is the clearest and the most uh, authentic. And all statements of the Prophet have got to be understood in the light of the Quran. And Islamic teachings according to the Quran are very clear that uh, the ultimate decision of who is going to get what results in the hereafter are going to be based purely on the merit of one's performance of what one, one believed and what one did in this life. May the Almighty enable us to understand the teachings of uh, Islam, his religion correctly, and may he enable us to practice them as best as we can.